If you have watched my recent channel update, then you will know that I am working with FX, believe it or not. And yes, I know I have been very unbiased in the past. I have had a few issues with FX guns in the past and I've, I've basically just said that on video in those reviews where I've had trouble with them and I've wondered what's going on, you know, and I've not been that impressed. But then, again, I have had FX guns that have totally blown me away, like the M3, for example. The, uh, the GRS edition, uh, was it the Cr uh, Dreamline, sorry, I nearly said Crown then. The Crown, really, really great guns. The Maverick as well, I really love the Maverick. And the more I use them, and I'm now working in the industry, so I'm working with these guns sort of day in, day out. The more I've learned about them, and the more I realise the skill and the, what's the word? Uh, running in for a start of some, some of the guns that is needed, okay? And what I sort of tell people who buy these is, read the manual from cover to cover, run it in okay run it in but anyway that's that's that so i am basically working a little bit with fx when i say working a little bit with them um, i am going to be one of fx's youtubers but i am going to remain totally unbiased i've said that in in the rat cave video to go and watch that so I just wanted to show you, which has kindly been sent from FX in Sweden and a sportsman gun centre here in the UK, the FX Impact M3 0.25 FAC. Now, as you can see, this has been already slightly tricked out, okay? So I've got to give a big shout out obviously to FX and Sportsman Gun Centre. And I've got a few other people to give a shout out to, okay? So first of all, you'll notice he's looking pretty sexy, isn't it? Pretty, looking pretty sexy. That, by the way, is an Arca Swiss 2 rail on the bottom of there. And I love the look at that. Uh, and it's just, it's functionality and looks just look you know are both just amazing so you can literally shoot this off a tripod now there's rails there for putting stuff and you've got a piece of picatinny rail at the end absolutely excellent uh, that is a sabre tactical one just in case you're interested i'm sure you are this the, the stock and then you said the stock the pistol grip is kindly from form rifle stocks here in the uk and no, don't adjust your screens. That is a left hand one, because I'm lefty, okay? Highly, highly recommend form stocks. I've used them in various rifles. The pistol grip on this is just amazing. I know it's left-handed, guys, so if you're right, it just excuse. They do do right-handed ones, believe it or not. Uh, just amazing absolutely amazing in fact they sent me two and i was like ah oh, what which one shall i put on i really don't know what which one to put on and they sent me a red one as well so here's one sort of bit bit close up look at these things they're just an absolute work of art absolutely stunning they really are british made as well and i've got to give another british company a shout out as well Although it's a Swedish gun, but hey oh, it is what it is. Um, Hug it Precision. That is the moderator that is on this FX right now. And it is excellent. That has been sent from Hug it very kindly to sort of put on this M3. They also sent me some other bits. I'll show you the uh, shroud as well. I'm, I might put this on eventually. It's a full uh, shroud for the M3, okay? Isn't that pretty cool? So that basically would just go on in place of sort of all that and the screwed on uh, hug it there, but pretty damn excellent. Pretty damn excellent. So we've got some real cool stuff 
to sort of try out and test on this rifle. Now, is this a full review of this gun? Well, uh, kind of. I've done the M3 sub 12 foot pound, so we'll have a little bit of a walk around this one. But my, the main aim of this video is to tell you what I am going to be doing with this rifle. Okay. So I'll give it a bit of a, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to be doing with it for, first of all, right? So this is now living in the rat cave. Okay. This rifle is. Do you like the sticker, by the way? No, they might be available. Bit of a prototype sticker, that is. Going to be slightly bigger, I think. You'll see them on this rifle, but it's a bit of a prototype. That's me, by the way, just in case you're wondering, just in case you're watching uh, this channel for the first time. Make sure you subscribe if you are. Right, so basically what I'm going to be doing with this rifle is I'm going to be testing the absolute crap out of it, okay? I'm really going to be seeing what this thing can do. But I want to share with you guys what it can do and the ups and the downs that I might, may or may not have along the way. I'm sure it's more ups than anything else. So I'm just going to give it a real deal, uh, my experience of this rifle as it happens, okay? And I'm just going to keep it real. And so far, it's been absolutely magical. Now, you may have heard me mention at the start of this video, these rifles take a bit of running in. Now, if you're new to FX, these rifles do take a bit of running in because the barrels, if you're not aware, the rifling on an FX smooth twist barrel um, or a, a superior X twist barrel, whichever one you've got, the actual rifling, rather than it being, if you excuse the actions here, sort of screwed in from the inside, the rifling is actually pressed from the outside. And as that rifling is pressed from the outside like that, you get tiny little cracks, microscopic, per perfectly normal. And basically what you've got to do is you've got to let them up. And you've, but the only way you can do that is just shoot the gun. So at the moment, I am just running this gun in. I'm not gonna really, really worry about accuracy yet until I have put at least say a thousand pellets through it, okay? Just to get that barrel really run in, lead it up and sort of ready for action, okay? So that is what I am in the process of doing at the moment. And I've been using, I've been running some various slug through it. So thanks to H&N for supplying pellets. So I've been running these through um, just to lead the barrel up pretty much. Like I say, I'm not sort of massively uh, going on about accuracy at the minute. I've been using these as well, uh, FX pellets, okay. Um, I'll, I'll roll in some footage of the targets. At first I ran this at um, 30 yards, okay, just running it in in my back garden, just, just trying it out basically, you know, just trying it out, making sure everything's all right. Then I took it to my local range bit more of a controlled environment uh, rather than where I usually sort of go and test stuff out. 50 meters and just, like I say, just running that barrel in. And I was getting some half decent groups. So half decent groups considering it's not running. So once I get them thousand pellets through it, I'm really, really gonna sort of hone it in and tighten those groups up and really see what this thing can do. And I'm gonna start pushing the slugs out as far as I can get them accurately. So I'm going to be going 150 yards plus. Um, my goal, believe it or not, and I'll be very, very happy if I can do it, is to take this out. Uh, I'm going to say 250, 250 yards, maybe even beyond. Just sit hitting steel. So we'll see, we'll see. We're, we're going to see how it goes. It's, it's a bit of an adventure along the way. So that is the plan. But so far, like I said, I'm running it in um, and just, just getting it ready for, you know, some of the adventures I'm going to take this thing on and I'm really looking forward to it. I have had a little hiccup along the way. Like I said, you know, I'm going to be totally unbiased. I'm going to tell you what happens as it happens and any issues that I have. 
The only issue I have had is with the magazine. And I found that this magazine wasn't sort of spinning round. So as I was cycling or cocking the action, it wasn't spinning it. Okay, it was like the spring's not powerful enough. Don't know whether it's because I've got these heavy slugs in and the spring can't sort of cope with the weight of the slugs that are in it. So I'm wondering if FX put the same spring in each caliber magazine. Um, so I'm just wondering, does that allow, if they do, does that allow for the different weights of pellets? So I sprayed a bit of silicon in there, you know, just trying to loosen it up, but it was still sticking a little bit. So I might have to exchange this magazine because I found myself having to tap the magazine. Once I cocked it back, I was having to sort of tap the magazine for it to sort of catch up, if that makes sense. So, but other than that, the mags are good. I do like the design of the magazines. They, they, are, they are pretty big. Um, you know, the uh, these ones are, so it is what it is, but it's great shot count. This, by the way, like I said, is in 0.25 cal. So it's quite an interesting color, but I was gonna go for the 2.2 and then I thought, I don't know, what, let's be different. Let's go for the 25. Running at 89 foot pounds. I've not done a chrono check yet. I've not done a muzzle velocity check or any of that. I am, just, like I said, I'm just running it in before we start crunching down numbers and really sort of messing with it. I've not touched any of the regulators. I haven't made any adjustments. It is just straight out of box. All I've done, or all I've had done, is I've, I've had this Arc Swiss rail put on this Sabre Tactical. I've put the form stock on, uh, the form pistol grip on myself. Yeah, it's still on, believe it or not. I footed that, yeah. Uh, running a Hawk um, Sidewinder scope as well. So uh, that is called, that is a, what is it? I always forget what these scopes are. Six to 24 times 50, that scope is. That seems to be doing the job very nicely. But let me just give you a walk around this then. I know, sorry guys, that was a bit long-winded, but I just wanted to tell you where I'm at with this rifle. You know, no BS. I'm just telling you how it is, how it's going to be. Wanted to get that out, out of the way. And um, Man at FX is totally, totally cool with how I'm going to run these videos and how I'm going to, and how I do my videos. He's totally cool with it. And I've spoken to Mr. FX himself on the phone. Right then, so let's just, we'll just quickly sort of run around this because it's pretty much the same as the M3 Sub 12, which I've done an in-depth in review on, but we'll sort of just, I'll go sort of uh, fairly quickly. So, you know, look in more detail on that video. In fact, we'll talk about the differences. So the only difference with this one being a FAC version is the power plenum. You've got the uh, 720 power plenum, which is quite a, quite a bit bigger than what the sub 12 one is. Uh, you've got more adjustment as well. You can adjust this here. Um, and you've got the fine adjustment here on the power wheel, okay? I have not touched any of these yet. They are all sort of factory. Factory settings, I'm not touching them until until I've run this thing in and you know and then I'm going to hone it in like I said and the uh, Arca Swiss 2 rail uh, like I said I wanted that fitted because it just looks totally cool I think it finishes it off and it offers a bit of protection to the carbon fiber wrap barrel uh, carbon fiber wrap bottle even so these things are just great I mean oh let me dig out a target from the sub 12 m3 uh, i think it's in here yeah m3 sub 12 i think i did various i think i think did various targets i mean refer to that video um let's just grab a grab a few there's there's a there are a number of them in here these are using just different uh, different pellets 30 yards this was 12 foot pound version I've already shown you, shown you these in a previous video. So I was totally impressed with that thing. Um, so I wanna do, the idea is to do exactly the same with this rifle, but at even bigger ranges, even bigger. So, 
but no, really cool, really cool. So there is your stock uh, recoil pad, butt pad, whatever you want to call it. It is adjustable, you can move it up and down, okay? So you can adjust that. I will be upgrading that to either a Sabre Tactical or uh, something else. Don't know, an adjustable one anyway. I do like the Sabre Tactical ones, so we'll see. We'll, but at the minute, I'm just using it stock. I also will be getting as well, this will. This is worth noting, form rifle stocks here in the UK are going to be, do, going to be doing a laminated cheek piece, okay? And they're doing a left hand one. Oh yes, I've already requested one of them, let me tell you. Um, this is your plenum gauge here, okay? Um, and then uh, your plenum gauge, yeah, your, your plenum gauge. The, this rifle has got dual reg regulators, by the way, okay? So your first regulator is sort of in, in here. Um, and then you've got, this is your uh, bottle pressure gauge there or manometer. So that's your first regulator gauge there. And then you've got your second one there at the back. I, call, I don't know why, I just call that the plenum gauge. Um, basically, if you don't know how these things work, it's more. It's pretty easy if you think of water. So I explained this in the Sub-12 uh, M3 video. Basically, imagine that's a dam full of water. Rather than that going, you know, basically you, that releasing air to fire the shot, you know, there's a lot of a lot of weight behind that that regulator, and I don't know, it's making the regulator do a lot of work. So basically, what they do is they sort of stage this down. So there's all that pressure in there, and then they stage it down a little bit, and then they drop it down a little bit, and it's sort of staged down. So it just makes the gun way more efficient. It makes the regulators work under less stress, and basically, the plenum is is more or less the gunpowder for the shot. So when you pull the trigger, the air in this plenum, which is a little version of that, a little tank, releases that air to fire the shot. Really, really clever. What is interesting as well that I've noticed, I mean, if you guys are really, really sort of pin sharp hearing, will be able to hear this thing fill up after you take a shot. So when you fire the shot, you'll suddenly hear this sort of hiss a little bit. And what it is, it's the plenum filling back up and they say it's uh, it's the FX breathing, okay? So you can't really rattle the shots off super, super fast. I think that'd make it inefficient. You've got to give it, I don't know, two or three seconds for that plenum to sort of fill back up again. So it's clever stuff. It really is clever stuff. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm super excited to sort of really try this uh, try this gun out to its limits. It's quite interesting actually because I use I use firearms sort of all the time. You know, centre fire rifles, rim fires, shotguns, all sort of pistol caliber rifles, pistols. I use all of it, but I'm super excited about, and I always have been about air guns. I just love air guns. I love the the way they're moving forward. The technology behind them it really really is quite good now um this is a 700 mil barrel version so the barrel is although a lot of people will think oh is that how long the barrel is no the barrel comes all the way back there so it is a super long barrel i believe fx are developing an 800 mil barrel okay so that is quite interesting the beauty of this particular um uh, make of air rifles fx a lot of their models are multi-caliber so you can literally just swap out the barrel and it's dead easy to do it's literally a grub screw there and uh you take the probe out and the barrel just basically slides out okay and you can put in another caliber barrel making sure that you've got the correct probe in and if ever you have a look at one of these and you're not sure, because they don't put the caliber of the gun actually on the rifle. If you have a look through there, 
you can just see that says, probably can't see it fully, that says 25. So you go by the probe and that indicates what, what caliber the rifle is, um, just in case you're interested. A normal thing with the FX as well, if you do this, hear that? That's the free floating hammer spring that is perfectly normal. The difference with the new M3, the Mark III Impact and the Impact Mark II is basically, uh, I think it's the extra regulator. Uh, the plenum is bigger, I believe. I may have got that wrong. I believe it is big, bigger. Uh, you can swap this from left to right, the cocking handle, and the cocking handle is bigger as well. Okay, and I think they've done something slightly different with the way the magazine goes in. But other than that, it's, it's pretty much the same. But um, if you're interested in going one, definitely going for one even, definitely go for the new one, you know. You can't, like I say, you can swap this round to left-handed. Um, not the magazine, unfortunately, and that is still one of my little gripes. So yeah, you can swap that handle round and, and fit it there so you can sort of have uh, left hand cocking. Yeah, one of my little gripes still with FX, well, with the FX is, is the, I like what they've done there, the way you can swap that round, but it's still not, it's a little bit awkward with that magazine sticking there when you're a lefty, but I know a lot of people, um, well, lefties, do get the, there's, there's some like aftermarket, um, I mean, you can get them on eBay, like the left-handed cheap pieces, they're like 3D printed. Uh, I'm holding off for a form one, I need it in blue. Do you know where I'm going with this? It's, it's just got to look right, on it? Uh, so that's that's the plan with that. But yeah, that's my only gripe. It's it's just they're not super ambidextrous this end. Although we're get, we're getting there this end, you know. So the safety catch is on the right hand side. So but you get used to that. I mean, if you're a lefty like me, you're probably that used to controls on the right hand side of the gun that it don't even matter now the main thing is comfort it certainly is with me um so yeah that's pretty much where where um where i think personally fx needs to just do a little bit more tweaking on making their their guns at this end a little bit more ambidextrous Fully adjustable trigger on the M3, as you'd expect. I am using this just literally straight out of the box and it is super, super smooth. No problems whatsoever with it. What I do like about it particularly as well is the way you can move, move it up and down. So if you've got short fingers or long fingers or whatever, you can really sort of adjust that. So that is really cool. Um, I am just, I've got to say guys, I'm seriously loving the Arca Swiss 2 uh, rail by Sabre Tactical, really loving that. Uh, it does come with a magnetic dust cover as well, a metal one to go on your filler area there. So that is so, so cool. Um, I'm just, just really loving this gun at the minute. I really am. It is just... It is just, so far, it is impressing me. The magazine's just a little bit of a pain, but I'll that one swapped or strip it down a little bit. But no, guys, other than that, I just wanted to sort of just throw out, it's, it's not, it's a bit of an overview because I've already done the M3 review on the Sub-12. So this is basically just a video just to show you where I'm at and tell you that I've got this. This is going to be on a regular... Uh, range time video of what I'm going to do with this so I'm just wanting to sort of put it out there and we're going to have some serious fun with this and test this thing to the limit and uh, you know really uh, have some fun with it and just see what it's capable of you know um, I'm, I'm just really like I said I'm really into the air guns at the minute they're they are really really good fun so yeah 
just putting you in the picture guys that's all i'm doing so stay tuned stay subscribed you're going to see some serious action out of this thing if you're into your air guns and a lot of subscribers have said to me right you need to do more air gun videos so i think i've got the one of the ultimate air rifles here to sort of really uh, get some good content out with and you know and see where we can go with these things and see uh, see what the limitations are of them and you know see if we can take it beyond the limits <laughs> what with were you shooting rack you'd be lucky if you can hit a barn door yeah i know but i don't know the power of editing no i'm only joking i'm only joking <laughs> but no guys just putting you in the picture telling you how it is as ever I am going to remain unbiased. I am going to tell you how it is, but I am looking, really, really looking forward to um, having some fun with uh, this rifle and probably newer models as they come out. Hopefully I'll be, uh, you know, one of the first to get them as they come out and give you a zero BS review. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks for watching. That is Rack and Load. See ya.